morning. Will you please join me for the call to worship? <clears throat> People of hope, we come today to worship a God who loves us just as we are. God sent Jesus into this world to teach us how to live and how to love, and who teaches us to care for our neighbor, whoever and wherever they are. So rise now, people of God, in body and spirit, as we sing praise to our loving God. God, we thank you for this day, for we know that this is the day that you have made, and we rejoice and we're glad that we're in it. Be with us on this day as we come to worship, we come to worship you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to worship here at Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church on this uh, wonderful Sunday morning. Um, I welcome those who are worshiping with us online this morning. If you are worshiping with us online, hit the like button so we know that you're worshiping with us or leave a comment so we know that you've worshiped with us today. Those of you who are here in the sanctuary, we welcome those of you who are worshiping with us for the first time. Welcome you to our, our community of faith and hope that you will, will consider making it your church home. A few announcements as we go into uh, worship this morning today. After worship we have brunch with the pastor um, at 12 30 up at central on kk um, if you haven't let mark know that you're going uh, please let him know so we can give them a count uh, before we get there next week is um, the last sunday of the month um, it is the deadline for uh, september september script order so if you're ordering script cards uh, make sure you get those in by next week um, forms are out in the narthex also they are online if you want to do it through online and it's also packed the pantry next sunday you can probably see that there's already some food out in the narthex on the table for next week but um, next week is our fourth sunday that we collect the non-perishables for vibrant and for courage so uh, please remember to bring all of that as we come into worship in two weeks, um, starting on October 1st, which is actually a Saturday, we are doing our Winter Madness Clothing Drive for Courage like we do every year through the month of October. So start collecting socks and gloves and mittens and whatever's up there, hats, hand warmers, scarves, um, so we can keep the kids who are out on the streets warm during the winter like we always do. And that'll be um, all through October. And again, our um, big gala is uh, night of cabaret it will be saturday the 12th of november we are doing it at potawatomi um, in the newly renovated uh serenity ballroom out there um, some great space um, you probably will uh, get some uh, 
email about it in the next week or two, but there are forms for sponsorships and tickets out in the Narthex um, as well as online. That's all I have this morning for announcements. So as we continue with worship this day, let us hear God's word. Good morning. Our Hebrew lesson comes from Amos chapter 8, verses 4 through 7, taken from the Inclusive Bible. <clears throat> Listen to this. You who live off the needy and oppress the poor of the land, you who say, if only the new moon were over so we could sell our grain, and when Sabbath is over, we will sell our wheat, charging higher prices for smaller portions, thus tilting the scales in our favor. That way we can buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and even make a profit on the chafe of the wheat. Yahweh swears by the pride of Jacob, I will never forget a single thing you have done. May God bless the hearing of these sacred words. Please rise as you are able for the reading of the scripture. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 through 28, taken from the Inclusive Bible. May the God of peace make you perfect in holiness. May you be preserved whole and complete, spirit, soul, and body, irreproachable at the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. The one who calls us is trustworthy. God will make sure it comes to pass. Sisters and brothers, pray for us. Greet all the sisters and brothers with a holy kiss. My orders in the name of Christ are that this letter is to be read to all the sisters and brothers. The grace of our Savior Jesus Christ be with you. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen.
Will you come to prayer with me today? Embracing a loving God of so many names. As we come together, let us come together as we praise you for the lives that we have. And as we come, let us continue to challenge ourselves with the stories in our lives. Let us understand that you allow us to be who we are and what we are through those stories. So let us open our hearts this day, but evermore let us open our minds so that we may be the receptors of the words that are about to be spoken. So I ask now that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, and the words that come from my mouth, along with the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, be the ever acceptable to you. In Christ we pray. Amen. So this morning we wrap up our series that we've been in over the last several weeks. But we're also somewhat wrapping up things that we have been in the series as we've been in the, in the book of Thessalonians, chapters 4 and 5. And we find Paul bringing us to this incredible, beautiful place where he's finally saying, listen, God is faithful. God is faithful. So in other words, live for God. God is faithful, so rest in God. God is faithful, and when you are not in trust, but to have that trust in God, because some of us have been running away, and I mean running, and we need to just stop and take a deep breath and to let out that deep sigh and say, God is good, God is faithful. And this is where Paul wanted the church in Thessalonica to end with the letter that he wrote. Of course, over the last several weeks, we've been in our series, A Story to Live, of which we have been living out our stories. Just as the church of Thessalonica lived out their stories, just as we've been living out ours. I think that throughout this series, we've been asking that question, of what is the story that people are going to talk about us for years to come? What is the story that you're going to share with others as the years come? I love the words of Mother Teresa where she says, we are all pencils in the hand of, of a writing of God. And she wrote that in a lot of her letters as she did when she was alive. I mean, God is writing our story. So what is your story? What has your story been? What do you want your story to look like? And as we heard right off the bat in our scripture this morning, we're to live with a purpose. So we're to live for God. When you're at the side of that road, when your life is at the end, realize that God has created you with a purpose. God has given you a purpose because none of us have been created to stay inside the road. God has created you to live, to have life, to love people, to be here for people, to be at rest even with God. Think about it for a moment. Paul is wrapping up this letter pretty much by saying, listen, may the God of peace make you perfect in holiness. May you be preserved, and may you be complete, as we heard with spirit, soul, and body. God is sanctifying you. Now, some people are probably saying, what does that all mean? How does this word sanctification work for us in our life? I think sometimes that's why people don't come to church, because we're using all these big and fancy words that get thrown at them, but... Let me try to explain, because it's really a beautiful word. Sanctification actually means to become holy, to be set apart, to become more like Jesus. So take a moment and think about this in your life, because when it comes to sanctifications, it's becoming more like Jesus. But there is this positional sanctification, and then there's this practical sanctification. Positional sanctification is where you are at because you've been sanctified, because you have been forgiven for your sins, because you have put your faith within Jesus. 
But also think about it that your sins have been wiped away, past, present, and even the future, because we have been set apart. God has already set us apart because God has chosen each of us. We have been positionally sanctified by God. But practically, while you are here on earth, we are being sanctified. We are becoming more and more like Jesus. And what that means is that the greed that we have today will hopefully make us less greedy a month from now. Maybe the selfishness that we have today will hopefully be half that or less than that a month or so from now, maybe even two months from now. <coughs> and any of our struggles that we may be currently going through, that as we become more and more like Jesus, become more and more like Jesus and less and less of the other. So Paul is writing to tell the church of Thessalonica, may the God of peace sanctify you. But we also have to think about the church in Thessalonica for a moment because the reality is that we've somewhat have been bombarded through all of this, that God has a lot of things for them to do as well as us. The first part of all of this has been, this is now how we live. This is how we live to have our relationship with God. Paul first was telling us, listen, to be pure of who you are, and we also are learned that we are to love people well. And we've also learned that we are to be known by our love. We also learned in the beginning of all of this that even in the midst of death, that Jesus is coming back. And that day of the Lord is coming, and I mean, we don't know what the time and date, and we don't know when it will be established, but we know it's coming at some point. We have to somewhat chuckle for the people back in the time because somewhat like when you are on a road trip with kids, they kept asking, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there? Kind of gets one of those things that's like, okay, it's around the next bend. But that's how the folks back in Thessalonica were. And now we come 2,000 years later and still he hasn't come back. And he's not coming back tomorrow, but we know that he's coming back. And the last two weeks have been like, here are all the things that we're supposed to be doing. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances. But we somewhat came to that conclusion over all of these weeks that this is somewhat impossible to do without having God in our lives. And this is exactly what Paul is saying to our scripture lesson this morning, that after all these things that we do, we're being told now to listen, to take that peace of God, because it will sanctify us through and through. We need to live with a purpose, knowing that God has and just doesn't give us these instructions to follow and then leave us alone in the midst of it all. But we've also been instructed to live with the end in mind. So how's your story going to end? Is the story going to end with you at the side of the road? Or is there more to it? What does it look like? How do you want it to look? And we just heard in the scripture this morning is that may your whole spirit and your soul and your body be kept blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the one thing that we need to know in Paul's letter is that Jesus is coming back. This has been the major theme throughout Paul's letter, and Paul gives that letter to us with the hope, but in the hope of the midst of death. We keep hearing Paul saying, I know life is hard. I know that there is suffering, but it's not the end that we need to keep that at the back of our heads, that we need to keep in mind that we're going through any suffering or struggles in our lives, that we're not going to do it alone. If you go all the way to the end of scripture, we hear in Revelations that the tears that we shed will always be wiped away. 
Now remember, from weeks back, it's not our end, but it's going to be our family reunion. Our end is celebration. Our end is always joy. That's what makes our end. And you also have to love Revelations as well, where it says, every nation, every tribe, every tongue, praising the name of Jesus. That's the end. Every person of color, every ethnicity, every tribe, every person, every language, praising that name of Jesus, that we live with that end in mind. This might be something that is very practical for us, because maybe you're in the midst of a decision, and you need to make that big decision in your life, and a great way to make it good and make a good decision is to ask the question, what is the story that you want to tell? And of course, we need to live knowing that it's not all up to us. And if there's one point that you go away with today is that it's not all up to you. It's not all about our efforts, as we've heard. The one who calls us is trustworthy. God will make sure that it comes to pass. I'm very bad at Bible memorization. I probably would have gotten a big F in seminary. Thank God I didn't have to have Bible memorization. But if you're good at memorizing things, keep those words in your head. And I think about Paul's writing to this church of Thessalonica, the city of Thessalonians, right back to the city of Thessalonica was Mount Olympus, the throne of Zeus, who were very religious in Thessalonica, but of all things, they didn't know Jesus. And then this small gathering of people who put their faith in Jesus began and a church was born. And Paul wants them to know that God wants them to listen because it wasn't up to them. Paul is saying, I'm here with you, the one who calls us trustworthy that God will make it sure and will make it come to pass. Therefore, by all this, we can have that hope, that we can have that joy, we can have that peace, and we can hold onto that because it's not all up to us, and we're not alone in our journey. Becoming more and more like Jesus, Jesus believe it or not, that it's not up to us. And I'm not saying that we don't make good decisions on our own, but none of us who are alone sometimes, that we know that God will always finish what has been started. I think we need to look how Paul ends this letter, not only that it's God's will who calls us, but as we hear, he says, sisters and brothers, pray for us. It's just this humble call from Paul that, hey, church, pray for us and pray for one another. I have to always comment that, you know, we use the inclusive Bible. So in other versions, it doesn't say sisters and brothers. It just says brothers. And then it then down the road, it'll just say sisters. But I like how the inclusiveness of all of it, that it says sisters and brothers. But greet all the sisters and brothers with a holy kiss. It says, my orders in the name of Christ that it's the letter that is to be read to all the sisters and brothers, that the grace of our Savior, Jesus Christ, is with each of us. As we wrap up this series, what story are you going to write? What is the story that you're going to talk about today, tomorrow, and years to come? And as you think of possibly the end of life, and we go back and back, what are the stories that you want people to tell about you? What are, pe what are the stories that you want people to tell about the church? We have to remember if we take anything away from this that we know that God is faithful and never will leave our sides. So as we continue to write our stories continue to write how things are going, we know that God is right there with that pen and pencil, writing it with us. Blessings upon each and every one of you this morning. Amen. I'd like to thank everyone for coming today. Um, and as you 
take a moment to uh, fill out your green cards. Uh, for those of us, who, those of you who are new, this is sort of a, a way for us to kind of keep in touch with one another, knowing who's here. Um, also on the back, there's a prayer request, and you, know, you can fill those out, and those get sent out in an email later in the week for everybody to pray and reflect on um, all the things that are going great in our lives, all the things that we need some help for, or we see some help with, with one another. Uh, the other thing we ask you to do at this time, besides putting your greet cards in the envelope, is if you have any contribution you'd like to make today, uh, there are some envelopes in the uh, pockets of the seats in front of you. Uh, feel free to um, reflect on that. If you can make a donation of any kind, or uh, those of you at home, um, you can go to the website and you can make a donation through our website. Um, anything you can to help keep the uh, help support the church and all of our mission and ministries for us to be here on Sunday, for us to have the wonderful music and the wonderful sermons, uh, all that is made possible through your support. So, thank you. So, you come to the table this morning. For those of you worshiping with us online, if you haven't already done so, we invite you to get your communion elements so you can take part. May the one God be with you. And, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts to the one who heals them. We, we offer our hearts to be filled with the balm of Gilead. Sing praises to our God who will fill us with springs of joy. Let the songs of thanksgiving are proclaimed to the one who delivers us to new life. We praise you for the inheritance, God, of wonder and delight. Springs of water trickling into mighty rivers, birds of the air cartwheeling in the morning mists. Tall trees dancing in the wind. As your children, we are blessed with abundant gifts beyond measure. We squander the beauty choosing to buy property in sin and death community. Heart's sake, you sent the prophets to us and indicated to us that we are ruining ourselves. But we were not strong enough to pull up our roots and to join you. So you sent Jesus faithful in all of us to restore and to be full of help. So as we join our voices with all who seeks to serve you far and wide, we lift our song of praise to you. and upon these gifts you provided the bread and the fruit of the vine. With the bread we break and the cup we bless, speak to us of the presence of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and all who follow Christ's way, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. On the night that Jesus was taken from us, as he gathered with all of the disciples, at the end of the meal, he took the bread from the table, blessed it and broke it, and to said, to take and to eat. For this is my body given for you, and each and every time that you eat of this, do so in remembrance of me. Likewise, taking the cup from the table, blessing it and saying this, that this is the cup of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of this often. And as often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Will you pray with me? In these moments of this holy place, upon these gifts, which offer hope and life upon these people who seek to be faithful, pour out your spirit of compassion and peace. As we eat of the bread, tasting its grace, may we move swiftly in service, carrying out compassion to the lost, the hurting, the hungry, the homeless. And as we drink from the cup of love, may the tears of our eyes at the brokenness of the world become the healing balm for your children. And when all time is gone, when eternity is upon us, we will join with our sisters and brothers from far and wide in singing forever your glory 
and wonder, God in community, holy and one. Amen. <laughs>